Hi everybody! In this video we're going to talk about linear systems. So you might ask what a linear system is, and one definition that might be useful is to say that a linear system is a set of two or more linear equations with two or more variables. Now in this course we're going to restrict ourselves to just two equations uh, which each have two variables. Okay, but once you get to grade 12, then things get a little bit different, but we'll save that for grade 12. And then, once we have our linear system, we can talk about the point of intersection, which is also known as the solution to the linear system. And the point of intersection is the only point that the equations have in common. So if you were to graph the lines, that would be the crossing point, right? The point where the, where the lines cross or intersect as we say. So uh, an example question might be something like this one. Which of the following points is the solution to the system defined by these equations? y equals 3x plus 14 and y equals negative 1 half x plus 7. Okay, so pause the video for a second and think about it and then we'll come back. Okay, I'm back. What did you come up with? Well, hopefully you realize that if a point is going to be um, the solution, then you'll remember that that point has to, has to satisfy or has to uh, be on um, both of the lines. So in other words, if I look at 1a, the point 2, 6, the point 2, 6 then has to be on the first line or satisfy the first equation, and also has to satisfy the second equation. Okay, so the best way to maybe look at that is to do our usual left side, right side check. So if I start that off, left side, right side, then uh, if I look at the first equation, the y is on the left side, so in that case that's just 6. And on the right side we're going to have 3 times 2 plus 14, and 3 times 2 is 6, plus 14 is 20. Okay, so left side does not equal right side, so immediately I can say that point isn't on the first line, so it can't be a solution. By the same token, uh, I can do the same thing with B. So for B, uh, I can, again, do the same thing left side, right side, and again I'm just going to look at this first equation so that the left side is going to be 8 and the right side will be 3 times negative 2 plus 14. 3 times negative 2 is negative 6 plus 14, that's 8. Okay, so this point, negative 2, 8, is on the first equation. Unfortunately, we're not done yet because we have to check to see if it's on the second equation. So I'm just going to move over just a tad here. And do the exact same procedure, but now with the second equation. So for the second equation, I set it the same way. Left side, right side. And the left side is still y, so that's going to be neg... Uh, sorry, that's 8. Sorry about that. 8. And then on the right side, there's going to be negative 1 half times negative 2 plus 7. So negative 1 half times negative 2 is 1 plus 7, and that's 8. So left side equals right side. This equation is also satisfied, which means that negative 2, 8 is the solution to the system. Okay, and there can only be one solution. If you think about it, if you have two lines, they only ever cross at one point. They can't cross at more than one point. So the fact that we found our solution means we don't even need to do uh, uh, C. Okay, although you could do it if you wanted for practice. Another way of looking at it is if we have two equations, we might like to graph 
the equations because after all we're looking for the point where they cross. So if we can graph our equations correctly then we can just look for the crossing point. If you have some graph paper handy then take a moment and pause the video and graph these two equations. Okay, just graph them the usual way, starting with the y-intercept and then using the slope to figure out a few more points, like at least one more point, and then draw your straight line and see if you can figure out where they cross. I'm going to try and do that now. So if you look at the first equation, you can see y equals negative 4 fifths x minus 6. Now this is honestly a little tricky for me because I have to zoom in a bit. And yeah, okay, maybe I can do that. Okay, let's try. So negative uh, 6 is where I'm going to start. That's my y-intercept. So that's down there. And then if I use my slope, it's telling me to go down 4 and then right 5. So down 4 will take me to negative 10 and then right 5 will take me to 5. So this is my second point here, negative 10 and 5. Now, I'm not very good with these lines, but if maybe I can put a line in. There you go. That's that one. Now I'm going to do the same thing for that second graph. I'm going to just change colors here so you can see a little easier. So for the second graph, we start at negative 11, uh, negative 12, excuse me, I apologize, negative 12. And this is telling us to go down 2 and right 1. Down 2 and right 1. Now, here's the thing. I'm already, like, so far off of the graph that I, instead I'm going to go up 2 and left 1. 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 So it's the same thing, just, uh, you know, a little bit easier for me. So now in this case I can connect those up and you know it's a little bit tricky here because after all I didn't uh, extend my black line very well but that's kind of the idea so we know roughly where these two lines cross they're roughly cross um, in this general location here now in math class saying that they cross in roughly a general location is not the best answer if you were doing this on a test, I would expect that you would be using a ruler so that you could really, really carefully tell where they crossed. Okay, I think in this case, if I'm looking at it, they act, the crossing point is actually negative 5, negative 2. I hope that you'll actually take the time and do this yourself and just verify that I've done this correctly. Okay, so let's say that we have a situation where we have a table of values and a graph. And again, we're looking for the crossing point. We're looking for where, um, where, would, where would the table of values, if I were to graph the table of values, where would it cross the line? So we can actually uh, plot the points. Again, I'm just going to zoom in a little bit here so we can maybe see it a bit better. So we're going to pl plot the points negative 2, 3. So there's that one. Uh, you know what, let me just make this a little bit, a little bit bigger here. Okay, let's try that now. So there we are. And 0, 2, so there's that one. And 2, 1, and oh, hey, wait, 2, 1, that's already on the purple line. I don't really need to do any more work. I can see that the point uh, of intersection has got to be 2, 1. That's got to be the solution, right, because it lies on the purple line. So I'm done. I don't really want to do anything else. Uh, in this case, this is probably the most difficult case because there's nothing graphed. We have an uh, algebraic expression in one case and a table of values in the other. And I chose this example because if you just kind of look at it uh, without the graph, you might get stuck um, and not be sure what to do here. So it's always good to have a think about, you know, what if I were to graph this one, what kind of line would that be? That's a strange looking equation, x plus 4 equals 0, right? It's not our usual y equals mx plus b form. 
It's just x plus 4 equals 0. One way that you might even uh, rearrange this is you might say that x equals negative 4. So in that situation, you might realize, oh, wait, that's a vertical line. That's a vertical line there. A vertical line there. So that's, so that's going to be a line that, uh, that, that is vertical, whereas if we look at the table of values here, you look at the table of values and it looks like the x's are fine and the y's, hey, wait a second, the y's are all the same number, 5. And if the y's are all the same number, that means that that's the equation y equals 5. It doesn't matter what value of x I choose, y has to be 5. And that's a horizontal line. So if you think about it, um, we can graph this. And I'm just going to do this, whoops, I'm just going to sketch this kind of quickly here. So here is my coordinate axis. Here is x equals negative 4 negative 4 over there, and here's y equals 5. Okay, so where do they cross? Well, it has to be at this point, which is negative 4, 5. That's negative 4, 5, not negative 4.5. Okay, so a little strange, but again, I want you to be able to deal with lines that aren't just in the y equals mx plus b form. We can still use them. It's not that big a deal. Okay, so we're going to start doing some, um, so in class we're going to start doing some example problems that involve words, so word problems, and um, yeah, some of them might be a little strange, like why would somebody want to buy 60 watermelons? I don't know, maybe they're really hungry, but we'll see how it goes, okay? See you in class.